Okay, so that's the throwing velocity. The last part of the problem then is to see, well, what's going to happen now if he launches a ball at this speed straight up? How high will it travel? So let's go to the next page and carry that out. So I'm just going to copy the information I had, that V was the square root of 1,000 right, in units of meters per second. And now I really have a one-dimensional constant acceleration problem where if this is y and this is x, I'm launching a ball straight up here with velocity v, and I want to see how high it gets, and I want to see if it happens to get to a height of 50 meters. So I want to solve for that height. So let's write down what we know about this problem. Well, we know the initial position is equal to 0. The final y position, which we're going to take to be the height at the very top of the arc, that's not really known to us yet. Um, so that's our unknown. What else do we know? We know the initial y velocity is equal to this 30 meters per second, or the square root of 1,000 is how we got the number. And I'm carrying that around. This is something kind of a neat result we're going to find. And uh, let's see, what do we know about the, the final point that we're trying to solve for? Well, we also know that the final velocity in the y direction, when he gets to the very, very top of the arc, the ball, of course, momentarily tr changes from a positive velocity to a negative velocity. And as it crosses from positive to negative, it goes through zero velocity at the very top of the arc. And what else do we know? We know the acceleration in the y direction is equal to minus g. So this looks like a case where we don't know anything really about the time t, but we do want to relate uh, positions to known velocities. And that looks just like uh, one of our standard equations here, the one that we don't often get to use, but here it is. The squares of the velocities change by twice the acceleration times the change in position. So that would say then that y final squared equals y initial in the y direction squared, right, plus 2 times the acceleration is minus g times the change in position, which of course would be y final minus y initial. And now let's see how our knowns and unknowns are doing. Uh, this is our one unknown, is y final. We're trying to solve for that. y initial, we certainly know. That's equal to 0. We know the value for g, right? Uh, and we know y initial squared is 1,000. And we know y final. So we should just substitute in. We're in good shape here. So y final velocity squared is 0 squared equals the initial y velocity squared is the square of this will be 1,000 meters squared per second squared uh, plus 2 times g is minus is 10, I mean, meters per second squared times y final. And solving then, y final equals, well, how are we going to solve this? Uh, this is 1,000 minus 20 times y equals 0. So we put the 20 times y, we add it to both sides. It will appear over here. And then dividing by the 20 to get y, we find 1,000 meters squared per second squared divided by 20 meters per second squared. And the answer is 50 meters, which is exactly the height of the clock tower, coincidentally enough. So it does seem that a you know, pretty strong quarterback, if he can throw up as fast as he has to throw forward in order to make a 100-yard pass, or 100 meters, a little bit more than 100 yards, uh, really could get a ball up near the top of the clock tower. And that's the answer then to that question. Okay, well, I think then 
with that, we're going to try to wrap up this podcast. And you've got a lot of good information on constant acceleration problems and the trickier type, the uh, projectile problems. For forces in multiple dimensions, we have that other podcast that I think will be very helpful. And I'm hoping that for circular motion problems, you'll be able to um, get some uh, uh, help in the Learning Center if you have any questions on those. Thank you very much.